How y'all doing? All right. Test. I woke up this morning with my mind, and my mind was dead on Jesus. And Lord, I woke up this morning, my mind stayed on the Lord. And I woke up this morning with my my mind was stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. and pray with my my mind is dead on Jesus and well I'm singing and praying my mind is dead, dead on the Lord and I'm singing and praying with my my mind is dead on Jesus hallelujah This morning with my my mind is set on Jesus. Well, I woke up this morning with my my mind is set set on the Lord, and I woke up this morning with my my. that song and in respect the state of being you're in right now. We thank the Lord for him waking, awakening us this morning Amen. and giving us the readiness of mind to want to come out and to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so it's so good to see each and every one of you out this morning. To all of our members who are, who are watching virtually, we, uh, we are delighted that you are with us. We're so thankful that, that you are worshiping with us this morning. To all of our visitors, you are our honored guest, and we want you to know that, that uh, you are welcome at any time you are in the area to attend the Greenville Latin Church of Christ, and we will recognize you at a later point in the worship service this morning. Our, our ushers have our confession cards, our offerings, and they also have our encouragement cards. And if you can secure a card from them, you can write your desires on those cards and then return them to the ushers, and they will, in turn, bring them to us. If you would like to respond to the invitation, if you'd like to be baptized today, place membership, we're asking you to come down forward. Uh, that way we can take your confession and that we can introduce you to uh, the members that are here at the Greenville Avenue Church of Christ. At this time, kind of look at your electronic devices, and, and if it is not on silent, go ahead and silence it now Amen. so that when your phone goes off, we look at ours and we cut it off because yours went off. I don't know if, if many of you get embarrassed by, uh, by your phone going off in a, uh, in a public setting, but I do, and so I like to do it ahead of time. I see uh, a few fans out there, and I hope that we are uh, surviving the heat, but it is there to, I would imagine the Lord is helping us to understand and to know that we want to be in heaven where the air conditioning is. It's a constant reminder. When you sit on those leather seats in your car, all right, I think you get the point. We like to set the focus of worship by reading First, Chron First Chronicles chapter 16, verse number 28 and 29. So all those that can and will, please stand. Give unto the Lord, ye kindred of the people. Give unto the Lord, glory and strength. Give unto the Lord, Give unto the, Lord. The, glory the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering, Bring an offering. 
and come before him. Worship him. So worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for all that you do for us, dear Father. Father, if we had a thousand tongues, we could not thank you enough for your goodness, your grace, your love, and your mercy upon us. Father, we would like to first ask that you remove from us any sin that might separate us and keep us from being fully devoted to worship this day. Father, I pray that you'll bless those that are en route, that they might arrive here without any harm or danger. Father, we want to give you what you ask of us. So I pray that we, as we have our strength, that we'll give you the best of it. And every moment that we have, that we can glorify you. And this offering that we bring is our, first of all, our lives. This offering that we bring to you, dear Lord, is our devotion to you. This offering that we bring is our commitment to doing our best to keeping your word. And so, Father, as we gather collectively here this morning, we express those givings, those offerings, through the way that we sing, through our being attentive to your word and listening and applying it to our lives, to our praying to you without ceasing for the cares of this world and, and our own concerns. But then, Father, we give back to you our time and of our personal possessions. And then lastly, dear Father, we recognize the great sacrifice of your dear son, how that he gave his life for us to give us the opportunity to speak to you at this moment. We love you, dear Father, and we pray that we'll always show that we love you by the things that we do. It is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days And watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high I'll live with him forever in glory by and by and Oh, yes, I live living I'll tell and sing love story there on high There with my dear Redeemer, there no more to die Oh yes, I live in glory by and by I want to be of service along this pilgrim way And lead the As day by day I travel, I'll keep him ever nigh And live with him forever in glory by and by And oh, yes, I live in, I live in glory by and by I'll tell and sing love story there on high There with my, there no more to die Oh, yes, I live in glory by and by. The end I know is nearing. By faith I look away to yonder home supernal, the land of endless day. I'll cling to him forever and look beyond the sky and live with him forever in glory. And oh, yes, I live in glory, living. Glory, glory, glory. I'll tell and sing love story there on high, there with my dear. There no more to die. Oh, yes, I live in glory by and by. I want to be a worker, after which we'll have scripture reading and prayer. I want to be a worker. 
Ready, let us sing. I want to be a worker for the Lord. I want to love and trust His holy word. I want to sing and pray and be busy every day in the vineyard of the Lord. I will work, I will pray in the vineyard, in the I will work, I will pray, I will labor every day in the vineyard of the Lord. I want to be a worker every day. I want to lead the erring in the way that leads to heaven above where all is peace and love in the kingdom of the Lord. I will work. In the vineyard, in the vineyard of the Lord, I will work, I will pray, I will labor every day in the vineyard of the Lord. I want to be a worker strong and brave. I want to all who will truly come shall find a happy home in the kingdom of the Lord. I will work, I will pray in the vineyard, in the vineyard of the Lord. I will work, I will pray, I will labor every day in the vineyard of the Lord. I Our scripture reading this morning will come from 1 John chapter 2, and we'll read verses 1 and 2. And it reads as follows. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Shall we stand now for a second prayer? By your eyes, I'll close your eyes. Dear God, thank you for allowing us to be in your heavenly house of the Lord on this fine Sunday, and thank you for allowing us to, to worship your Lord and learn everything that we can, dear Lord. And thank you for allowing us to come here and live another day, dear Lord. And we want to thank you for allowing us to, to be very holy people in your house, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The Oh, 
So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Oh, till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to to the order of service, which is communion. Were you there when they crucified our Lord? Were you there? In 1 John, the fourth chapter, in the ninth verse, it reads, In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. The scripture reference for communion will be coming from Matthew, the 26th chapter, verses 26 through 29. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Our Father in heaven, Father, we so thankful for all that you do in sending your son to save us, Father, from the sins that died on the cross so we'll have everlasting life. Father, as we betake this bread, which is your body, and take this cup, which is your precious blood, Lord, may we do it with clean hands and pure hearts, Loving you and thanking you, Lord, for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus rose with all power in his hand. In his hand, Jesus rose with all power in his hand. In his hand, they tell me that he died. My Lord, he rose on Sunday morning. Jesus rose with all power. stone away they tell me that the angels came down 
from the glory and their own stone away and Jesus arose with all power in his hand in his hand and Jesus arose with all power in his hand in his hand and Jesus rose with all power in his hand uh, in his hand they tell me that he died hey my Jesus rose on Sunday morning Jesus rose with all power in his hand in his Sometimes it's just good to talk with Jesus anytime you have good days or bad days. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Oh, now let and let us tell and he will hear and he will answer by and by now when you feel as your heart under heaven is and you will find with Jesus makes it right all right I may have doubts and fears my eyes be filled with tears but Jesus Night, well, I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. All right. Now let us have a little talk with and let us tell. Oh, he will hear. And he will answer by and by now when you as your heart and you will find with Jesus makes it a right all right now sing all right it's all right you know it's all right it's all right Lord just a little makes it a right all right now sing all right it's all right you know it's all right it's all right Lord a little talk with Jesus makes it right. All right, now let us have and let us tell. Lord, He will hear and He will answer by and now. When you feel a little prayer for yearning as your heart, and you will find with Jesus makes it right. church say amen. amen. That was pretty good. <laughs> we don't have to say it again this morning. <laughs> what a blessing it is to be in the house of God, not, not only on this morning, but every, every chance we get to be able to show our appreciation and our thanks to God. It is a privilege. So to be able to gather in this place, in this moment, and know that it is God who is giving us the strength to be able to uh, do all of the things that we do. Sometimes we don't acknowledge his grace and his mercy, but this morning we ought to be thankful uh, to the God of heaven who does all things well. What is our, what is our theme? And then y'all did, you guys did good with the Amen. <laughs> what is our what is our theme? The power, the power of us. Amen. And so we switched themes on last week. We had Brother Jonathan Morris Morrison 
who came and he did an outstanding job looking at this quarterly theme, our third quarterly theme, which is united in reasoning. United in reasoning. Can y'all say that with me? United, united in, in reasoning. reasoning. What, a, what a blessing it is to be um, in the presence of God's word, to be able to reason from God's word. Story is told of a man who thought he could reason with God, and he goes on the top of a, a tall hill, and he yells out, questions to God and he says he says what's a million dollars or what is a million years uh, to God and the answer came back in a thunderous voice and God said uh, one minute and then he yelled again and he said he said God what is a million dollars and God thundered back saying one penny and so the man got smart and he said, God, can I have a penny? <laughs> and God says, sure, in one minute. <laughs> My point is, is we cannot reason. We can't out reason. We can't match wits with God. The best we can do is understand what Isaiah wrote. In Isaiah 55 and verse number eight, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not Amen. your ways. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want to look at the text that was read in your hearing and that is 1st John chapter 2 and verse number 1 and verse number 2. How many Bibles do we have? I know we don't use them, but I'd encourage you. I'd encourage you to bring your Bibles, especially as we are looking at these series of lessons on reasoning. Because it's not about what we think. It's not about what we feel. It is what the Word of God says. So I'm encouraging you to study with me from the Scripture. And I'm also encouraging uh, the person that is putting these scriptures on the board uh, to, 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 to keep them up there. Amen. All right. Bible says, or John writes, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for ours, but the sins of the whole world. I'd like to take for a subject this morning, God's courtroom. God's courtroom. It is a sobering event to witness men and women walk into a courtroom in shackles. To understand that they are literally and figuratively trapped inside of a criminal justice system. It is equally sobering when we hear the gospel preached to understand that we also are trapped inside God's system of justice. When you think about the world, the world is God's courtroom. You may never stand in front of an earthly judge, but in this moment, our actions are open, our thoughts and our intentions are opened to the God of heaven that is judging everything that we do and everything that we say. In this moment, each of us finds ourselves in God's courtroom. In a spiritual sense, we are born into this courtroom. But when you think about it, one day this trial is going to end. My trial is going to end. And your trial is going 
to end. The Hebrew writer wrote in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, it is appointed unto man once to die, but after death, all of us are going to be judged. I see three characters in this text, and I want to illuminate them for you this morning. I want to talk about the judge of this world. I want to talk about the prosecutor, but I also want to talk about the advocate. Thanks, thanks be to God that we have an advocate this morning. When you think about judges, all of us are judges. The person next to you is constantly judging you based on how you look, what you wear, where you go, what you post on social media. I'm judging you, you're judging me. Brother Gibbs, you look tired this morning, amen. All of us are constantly judging each other. But then you also have judges who are elected and judges that are appointed. And they wear robes and they sit on benches. But I want to talk about a different judge this morning. I want to talk about a judge that judges eternity. I want you to see him in this text. First John chapter two and verse number one, if you'll put that back on the board, listen to what John says. He says, my little what? These things write out unto you that she sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the what? With the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Here's my question for you. Why is it that we need an advocate with the Father? Why is it that we need some help? Why do we need someone to speak to us or speak for us on behalf or on our behalf for the Father? I believe Acts 17 and verse 31 paints a picture of why. The Bible says in Acts 17 and verse 31, we need someone who can speak for us, someone who can advocate for us because he, talking about God, hath what? Hath appointed a day in the which he, talking about God, will do what? Will judge the world in righteousness. Why is it that we need an advocate with the Father? Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 14 says, for God shall do what? Come on now, church. God shall bring some work. He will bring Every work into what? Judgment. Into judgment with every what? Secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. What I'm trying to help us to appreciate this morning is that all of us are on trial. What I'm trying to help you appreciate this morning that God sees and hears and knows everything about you, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Look at Matthew chapter 10 and verse 26. And I'm trying to make the point. We're talking about reasoning based on God's word. So I want you not to just hear me speak, but I want you to read the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Why is it that we need an advocate? Why do we need Jesus Christ? The Bible says, fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Amen. And nothing hid that shall not be known. Look at verse 28. The Bible says... And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear what? Yeah. Him. Who is the him? The him is God, which is able to destroy both soul and body. Where? In hell. Here's why it matters. It matters because the God that is the judge of this world, he holds your eternal sentence in his hands. It makes sense that he is the judge of the whole world. 
since he created it, amen. amen. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 1, in the beginning, who created? God created the heavens and the earth. And on the sixth day, he formed man amen. out of the dust of the ground and breathed into him the breath of life, and he became a living soul. He should judge you. He should judge me. Why? Because we are his creation. The Bible says that he, he sits high, but he looks low. Isaiah will write in Isaiah 66 in verse number 1, Heaven is my throne. And the earth is what? The earth is my footstool. He sits on the bench in heaven. Amen. What are you saying? I'm saying the world is his courtroom. There is one lawgiver and one judge. Story is told of two bad boys. I'm talking about bad boys. Y'all ever seen bad boys? Not the movie. I'm talking about bad boys. And their mother heard that there was a minister who could speak to boys and had some success with getting them to behave. And so the mother talked to the preacher and the preacher said, sure, I'll, I'll sit down with them, but I want to talk to them individually. And so the preacher calls the boy in and the boy is looking at the preacher and the preacher in his most serious voice, he says, son, do you know where God is? And the boy didn't say anything. And then the preacher with a more stern voice, he says, son, do you know where God is? And the boy just, just, just sat there. And then a third time in a booming voice, he says, son, do you know where God is? And the boy jumped up and ran home and uh, hid in his closet. And his brother saw what was, what was going on. He said, he said, he said what, what, is, what is going on? What happened? He said, man, we are in trouble now. He said, God is missing, and they think that we did it. <laughs> you know, that's a funny story. But a lot of us act like God is missing. A lot of us live our lives as though God is not on the bench. A lot of us live our lives and we act like this is not God's courtroom. I've stopped by and I want, I want to be very serious in this moment. I want to say to all of us, and I'm coming down, but I'm coming back up. I want to say to all of us that no matter what we think or how we feel, this is God's courtroom. Amen. All of us are in God's jurisdiction this morning. Every day of your life, God is on the throne of heaven. So when you look at this text, I want you, I want to ask you a question and I want to explore with you what is this trial about? We know that God is the judge of all of us. We know that this is his courtroom, but what is this trial about? I want to study uh, 1 John chapter 1. And let's look at verse number three. And I want you to study this with me because it's important for us to know what are the issues in this case. The Bible says that which we have seen and heard and declare unto you. So this is John who is writing about Jesus. John has witnessed Jesus firsthand. John has dealt with Jesus and seen the miracles firsthand. And so he is talking to his audience and he says, that which we have seen and heard, he's talking about Jesus. We declare the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. That, why? that ye also may have fellowship with us. Now here's the question, church. Who does he have fellowship with? It says in the next verse. And truly our fellowship is with who? With the Father. Here's, here's what I want you to understand. I want you to understand that God wants to have fellowship with you. Amen. The God of heaven. Yes, Lord. <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen again. Now, y'all need to stop laughing and pay attention. Amen. The God of heaven, I, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm serious, and I want to make this point as best as I can. The God of heaven wants to have what? Fellowship. 
You know, in chapter one of this, of this book, the word fellowship is used over and over again. In 11 verses, it's used four times. And what I want you to understand is that, is that what John is talking about, he is talking about fellowship and intimate connection with God. He wants to have fellowship with his creation. When you look at the whole of the Bible, the whole of the Bible is about one thing, God trying to have a relationship with his creator. He didn't call. He didn't call Abraham for nothing. He wanted to help a, a, a people to understand how to have fellowship with him. He didn't send Jesus for no reason. It is all about what? It's all about fellowship. Amen. Fellowship with God. But here's the problem. Look at verse number five. The Bible says that God is, and, and, and I know the first verse, the first part doesn't say this. This then is the message which you have heard of him and declare unto you that God is what? Light. That God is light. God is light. What does that mean? That means that God is righteous. That means that God is holy. That means that, that there are no blemishes when it comes to the character of who God is. God wants to have fellowship with his creation. But the Bible says, and in him is no what? Is no darkness at all. What are you saying? I'm saying that. I'm saying when you think about God and you think about this trial that we are in, God cannot help have fellowship with evil. Amen. He can't hang around people that are spotted and blemished and sinful. So when you think about this trial, I want you to understand something that the Bible says that the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but it is what? It is our iniquities, it is our sins that separate us from God. What are you saying? I'm saying that God loves the sinner, Amen. but he punishes sin. God loves the sinner, but he has to punish darkness. So, so when you think about this trial, when you think about the God of heaven, when you think about the Father, this trial is about him wanting to have fellowship. But having to punish that which is evil, I want you to see this, this prosecutor. And this prosecutor is a good prosecutor. The Bible describes him in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8. I'm glad you sit on the front, Brother Marcus. I appreciate your support. The Bible says, be what? Be sober. Look at it. Says be what? Be sober and be what? Be vigilant because you're what? Because your adversary, did you not know that you have an adversary? Did you not know that the devil is as a what? A roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to sift you like wheat. I'm telling you, he has a good case too. He has a good case. Why? Because all of us have what? We have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Put Revelations chapter 12 and verse number 10. I want to show you that every time you sin, Come on now. every time you miss the mark, every time you have a bad thought or act inconsistent with God's word, he is constantly filing charges, submitting indictments yeah. to the judge, which is the God of heaven. Look at what the Bible says. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and the strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser, who are we talking about? We're talking about Satan. Of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God. How often? Day and night. I'm telling you, he's after you. He is accusing you, not just in the morning, but in the evening. He's accusing you day and what? And night. What I want you to see is that a good prosecutor knows how to cross-examine his witness. And here's what he does. He puts us on the witness stand. In our own mind, none of us are on the witness stand right now, but in your heart, in your own mind, he puts us on the witness stand. Thank God for you, Marcus. Are you okay? 
Here's what he does. This is, a, this is his cross-examination, and it happens the same way for all of us. He'll ask you questions. He says, Marcus, do you know who God is? Yes, I do. Now, y'all heard that, right? He said, he said, yes, I do. Do you believe, Marcus, that God is on your side? Yes. You hear what he said? He said, yes. Now, if you continue to answer yes, and the prosecutor's asking you questions, he's setting you up. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Do you believe, Marcus, that you have fellowship with God? You believe that you have fellowship with him? Do you believe that this book, the Bible, is true and that every word in it is right and correct? Yes. What do you think about 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 6? Because you said you had fellowship with him. You said that he's on your side, didn't you? What do you think about that? If we say, if we say, if you say, Marcus, that you have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, you're a liar. And the truth is not in you. And here's what he does. And he's so effective at this. He says, Judge, may I approach? And he offers devil's exhibit number one. And he said, can I publish this? Now, this is all happening in your mind. And, and on the screen, he said, look at you. Isn't that you last week, Marcus? Red shirt, that's you, isn't it, Brother Marcus? You think you should be in the club, Marcus? Do you think that God, God can have fellowship with somebody who has been a hypocrite? In the church on Sunday, amen, walls and lights. But in the club, Marcus! Then he says, Your Honor, may I approach again? I've got devil's exhibit number two. Can I publish, Your Honor? This is all happening in your mind. I'm just trying to show you how Satan works, how the prosecutor works. He says, he says, 19. How old are you, Marcus? 98. <laughs> that little secret that you didn't think anybody knew about. Only you and God know that that ever took place. But the shame and the guilt, that's you. How can you lead singing? How can you preach a sermon and you know who you are? I know who you are. This is Satan. This is a prosecutor. And see, here's what he understands. He understands that he does not have to kill you. He only has to kill your faith. Amen. Story is told about two frogs that were in a group of a lot of frogs. And they were, they were hopping through this forest. And two of them fell into a great ditch. And they're hopping, hopping, trying to get out of this ditch. And the frogs that did not fall in, they're yelling at these frogs. Why don't you stop? Why don't you give up? Why are you trying? You'll never make it out. You'll never make it out. One of those frogs listens and stops hopping and dies. But the other frog just keeps on hopping and hopping and hopping. And the frogs from the top are looking down. Didn't you see what happened to the other frog? Why don't you give up? Why don't you die? Why do you keep hopping? <coughs> but the frog just keeps hopping. And finally the frog hops out of the pit. And they look at him and they say, why'd you keep jumping? Didn't you hear us tell you you'd never make it? And he said, I'm deaf. I thought y'all were encouraging me. <laughs> But here's the point. Here's the point. Satan wants to ask you the question, why are you still yeah. hopping? Why are 
you still praying? Why are you still coming to church? Amen. Thank you, Sister Fagan. <laughs> Amen. And so I want us to look as we conclude at this last point. The most important point of this lesson. Put the text back up. First John chapter two and verse number one. Look at what he says. And we ought to appreciate all that God has done to bring us to this point. The Bible says, my little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have a what? Advocate. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. I want you to appreciate as I close this sermon is that Oftentimes, when someone is charged with a crime, they say that you should not get an appointed attorney. They say, if you want to beat the charges, you better pay someone. That's what people say. But what I want to show you this morning is that the attorney that was appointed for us has a 100% dismissal rate. And I pray, I pray that you're listening to me because this is, this, is, this is our life. This is our soul. I think about Jesus in John chapter 8. There was a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. And you know what the prosecutors did? The, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they, they grab this woman and they take her to the temple and throw her in front of Jesus. And they said, you know what the law says? She broke the law of Moses. And the law of Moses, it requires that she be what? That she be stoned. Look at this sinner. Look at this woman. We have all of the evidence. All of the witnesses saw her in the very act. She should be killed. She should be stoned. But you know, the attorney that we're talking about, the one that God has appointed for me and appointed for you, he stooped down. And he began to write. He began to write in the ground. I don't know what he wrote, but all of those who were present, the prosecutors, saw what he was writing in the ground. And when he finished writing, he stood up and he gave one of, the, one of the shortest, most profound closing arguments known to man. He said, ye without sin. You throw the first stone. The Bible says that the prosecutors, they, they, they signed a motion to dismiss and they walked out. What am I saying? I'm saying that, that the attorney that has been appointed for you and that has been appointed for me is some kind of attorney. Here's what you got to understand. That the judge will allow you to represent yourself. And there are a whole lot of us. And I'm talking to us. I'm talking about, about the generation that is under me. There are a lot of us who are not here because we are trying to represent ourselves. Meditation and, and, and yoga and oneness with the universe and Eckhart Tolle and all of these. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A whole lot of folks who are not here this morning. Why? Because they are at home trying to represent themselves. And I've stopped by to tell you that God will allow you to. He will let you, even though he has provided the best, he will let you represent yourself. God will allow you to hire your own attorney. He's given you the best. But he'll let you. Listen to all of the black black. Uh, he, Hebrew, what, what, what are they called? Israelites. You can get caught up in downtown if you want to, listening to, to all of what they're saying about, about. He'll let you hire Muhammad. He'll let you hire whoever you want to hire. But you throwing good money at, at bad. Because the Bible says, put this on the board, Acts 4 and verse number 12. I want you to see it. I want you to read it. 
I know we can quote it, but I want you to see. This is why it matters, because neither is there what? Salvation. Say it with me, church. Neither is there salvation. in any order. There's no salvation in the black Hebrews. Amen. Why? Because, because God put salvation. Judge put salvation where he wanted to put it. And any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must, we must be saved. Let me tell you a little bit about this attorney. He, he knows the, the law backwards and forwards. There was a time during the Passover when he was 12 years old. And his parents lost him and they were looking for him. You know where they found him? They found him in the temple arguing and studying and discussing the law of Moses with the religious leaders. He's been studying the law since the beginning of time because it's his law. His parents said, why would you do this to us? He said, didn't you know? Wouldn't you have expected that I would be about my father's business? tell you something he said I didn't come to destroy the law I came to satisfy it I came to show you what the law means he is the epitome of God's law oh, 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 I'm trying to help you this morning he knows your struggle the Bible says but he was tempted in all points like as we but without sin you want somebody who knows the judge personally when you're trying to find somebody, you don't want to hire some flashy out-of-town attorney that has never had lunch with the judge. You want somebody from that jurisdiction. Why? Because they understand the judge's idiosyncrasies. They know what the judge likes and does not like. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Nothing was created without him. Jesus knows the one that you need. And I'm closing. There's a principle that I want to end with. It's called the Fourth Amendment. And the Fourth Amendment is a beautiful principle. And what it says is that the government cannot seize your person. They can't arrest you. They cannot seize your property unless they have probable cause that is supported in an affidavit which is a warrant. So you know what happens? A person is caught with drugs or a person is as guilty as they can be. But if the attorney sees that there's not probable cause, they can file something called a motion to suppress the evidence. Amen. And even though a person is as guilty as sin, that evidence can be thrown out. Mm -hmm. So when they come to trial, all of the evidence that supported your guilt is not there. And so when they present the case to the judge, the evidence that supported your guilt, it doesn't exist. Why? Because the Fourth Amendment protects against Amen. illegal search and seizure. What am I saying? I'm saying that Jesus is not only your attorney, but he's your Fourth Amendment. He's your Fourth Amendment. On Judgment Day, when the accuser comes before God with accusations, and let me tell you, he has a good case. The Bible says that there is none righteous, no, not one, when he is submitting your dirty little secrets. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ, it stands in front of you. He files a motion to suppress. The Bible says in Romans 8 that... Therefore is no condemnation to them that are where. Come on now, church. Put Romans in. There is therefore now no. No. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? There is condemnation outside of Christ, but inside of Christ there is no condemnation. Colossians 2.14. You know what he did? 
blotting out the handwriting Amen. of the ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it away, nailing it to the cross. I'm ending. And as I end, I want you to look at John 12 and 48. Two more scriptures and the lesson is yours because this is what's going to judge us. We're in God's courtroom, but this is what will judge us in the last days. You know what Jesus said while he was on earth? He says, put it in the NIV. And good job. Thank you, sister. There is a judge for the one who rejects me. He's offered this attorney, free of charge, a gift. But the God of heaven, who will judge us, says, if you reject Jesus, if you accept not his words, the words that I have spoken will condemn them in the last day. Now, put 2 Thessalonians 1 in verse number 7. I want this to settle in. I'm not trying to... Uh, to do anything but convict you with the word of God because this is about reasoning not based on what I think or what I feel but based on the word of God Amen. and give relief actually put that in the King James Version <laughs> and to you who are troubled with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels Jesus is coming back y'all Verse number eight, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that what? Now he wants to have fellowship with us, right? He sent his son that he might have fellowship with us, that we might know God. But there are those who will not know God when he comes back. And it's because they would not hire Jesus Christ. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? Jesus said, as he was going back to heaven, Mark 16 and 15, put that on the board. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Preach that I am the Christ. Preach that I came and I died. And I rose on the third day and established my church. Preach that. Amen. And he said every, to every creature, doesn't matter what color, doesn't matter what background, preach it to everybody. Verse 16. He that what? This is how you hire Jesus Christ. He that believe, come on now, <laughs> that Jesus is the Christ. The son of the living God, if you believe this morning, if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, he asks that you step out on faith. He asks that you repent of your sins and that you confess him, not just in words. You, you've got to say that I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, but he wants you to live it out every day. Why? Because he wants fellowship with you. And then you got to be baptized. He that believes and is baptized. A man has to be born again, born of the water and of the spirit. And if you do that, if you do that, when judgment comes, you're going to be all right. Come to Jesus. You've heard the word. Believe it with all your heart. Repent of your sins. Confess that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Be willing to go down with him in the watery grave of baptism that puts you into Christ, that puts you into his church. And in the last day, you will be justified. Not because you're so good, but because God is good. Come to Jesus. As together we stand and sing, will you come? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing all precious Come to Jesus. Is the Come to Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Makes me God bless you. white as snow. No Come to Jesus. Other. 
He loves you. He loves you. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We're gonna wait on you. We're gonna wait on you. For my pardon, this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come to Jesus for my cleansing. This my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other bounds Come to I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me a whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh. Precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, precious is the flow that No, no other bound I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. I keep falling in love with him over, over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over. As the days go by, oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over, over again. And he keeps blessing me over and over, over, over and over and over again. And he Blessing me over and over and over and over, over again. And he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Cleansing me over and over, over and over and over again, and He keeps cleansing me over and over, over and over and over again, and He gets sweeter and sweeter as the day go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. We want to thank Brother Shelton Gibbs Amen. for it, for the message this morning Amen. and giving us a, uh, a beautiful picture of what judgment is going to look like. And if you ever stood before a judge before, 
you know, it really gets the nerves. But then, not having proper representation, you know, should really kind of drive you into a, a nervous wreck. But knowing that we have Jesus as a lawyer, it should send, you know, great comfort to each and every one of us. I pray that we hire him through baptism and that we continue to serve the Lord because he has a relationship with the judge. So beautiful message this morning. We have two that have want, who want to put on the Lord in baptism. Amen. And we have Micaiah. Okay, come forward, please. And then we have Nico to come forward. I'm going to ask the two of you all a question. And uh, this question brought death to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but it will bring life to you. Micaiah, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, sir. Very good. Nico, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, sir. You all are making the greatest confession that you can ever make in your life. You are acknowledging that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And just in a minute, we'll, we'll uh, baptize you and you'll be members of his body. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless the both of you all. And go this way and, and we will prepare you for baptism. You know, as Brother Gibbs was presenting, and poor Marcus was a good sport, right? <laughs> so he wasn't talking about him, you know, he was just using him as an example for overall. But then, you know, in those videos, the persons in the background normally get their face blurred, right? So how many of us was in there when Marcus was not? <laughs> Satan is going to use that same video to, to convict a lot of us, <laughs> well, a lot of y'all. <laughs> Beautiful job. We have those who have responded to the invitation this morning, and as I call you, to be praised, the Lord our God is worthy of glory.
feel the spirit. Who's in my heart? I'm gonna sing to the spirit. Who's in my heart? I'm gonna sing till Jesus comes. I'm gonna sing all to my Jesus. Who's in my heart? I'm gonna sing all to the Jesus. Who's in my Jesus? I'm sing all to the Jesus. Who's in my Jesus? I'm sing all to my Jesus. I'm gonna sing all to my Jesus. Who's in my Jesus? I'm sing all to my Jesus. Who's in my Jesus? I'm sing all to my Jesus. It was great for years that brought me my Lord. It was great for years that taught me my Lord. It was great for years that kept me my Lord. And it's great that will lead me down. Hallelujah. I'm gonna pray for my Jesus. Oh, 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 my Jesus. Can't you feel it? me. Mm-hmm. 
Son of the living God. It is by his authority that I now baptize you, repentant believer, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, for remission of your sins. Amen. Amen. up in confession of your faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. It is by his authority that I now baptize you, repentant believer, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, for remission of your sins. Amen. Amen. the part of our service which is collections. The scripture reading will be taken from 1 Corinthians 16 chapter verses 1 and 2 and it reads now concerning collection for the saints as I have directed the churches of Galatia so ye also are you to do on the first day of the week let each one of you put something aside and store it up so there be no gathering when I come. Let us pray. Dear kind and gracious Father, we come with thanksgiving in our heart. We're so thankful for your grace and your mercy. Father, we ask at this time that you accept this offering. We ask that it be used for your kingdom and your glory. And we ask that it may be a great blessing for many. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. To our viewing audience, if you go to uh, gacoc.org, you will look at, uh, click on the link labeled Give, and you will find one of our four ways to give. For those of you in our audience today, you may drop off your offering as you leave the building. Thank you. To all of our visitors, you are our honored guest. And when I call your name, I'd like to ask you to stand so that we might see where you are and we might be able to greet you when services are over. We have uh, Jean, Ari Ariana, Adriana. Okay. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Miles Macklin. All right. Tiana Humphrey. All right. Welcome. Welcome. And then Veronica Coleman. All right. We'd like to welcome you all once again to the Greenville Avenue Church of Christ. And I'm so glad you chose Greenville Avenue as your place of worship. I pray that if you're traveling, that the Lord might keep you all safe. And if you're looking for a church home, then look no further than the Greenville Avenue Church of Christ. Um, this is who we are. We're a big family here, uh, but we love one another, and I'm sure we'll find there's plenty of room for you and, and for the work that you will bring to this area. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the Greenville Avenue Church of Christ. I was passed a note here. Grady, Grady Marshall, Jr. Grady Marshall, Jr. If you can, just raise your hand, maybe. All right. And uh, from what I understand, He's celebrating 91. Today he'll be 91. 91 years. Happy birthday to you. May the Lord continue to bless you. 
And then they stayed uh, asking for prayers for all, all things concerning Grady Marshall Jr. and his caretakers. So once again, congratulations. Just a few announcements. Some of our members uh, who have, uh, were beneficiaries of our love and care pause for a moment to thank us. Thank you for the calls, cards, texts, and food that you provided for me and, my, and Michael during my recovery. I am very grateful for the love and support of my Greenville Avenue family and brothers and sisters in Christ. I love you all. I am so excited to be in the house of the Lord with you. And that's Sister Lee Spencer. To my GACC family, I really appreciate the calls, cards, texts, and condolences at the passing of my sister-in-law in Detroit. You showered, you showed why Greenville Avenue Church of Christ is such a special place. Thank you for having such a giving spirit. You are truly a blessing. And that's from Randy and Laval Clark. I want to thank my church family for all the gifts, prayers, and support. Please keep me in prayer as I enter a new journey. Love you all. And that's Octavius Hobbs, Jr. Then we have here. Thank you all. So grateful there are amazing people in this world, people like all of you, from Annie and Tommy Sharp and Aaron and Ant Antonio Johnson. All right. Good health is vital. How's your spiritual fitness? Join your service group on Friday, July the 29th at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. on Zoom. Build up with prayer and edification. Look for more information from your service group leader about how to join the fun and the fellowship. And I hope each and every one of you all have been able to tune in to our summer series. It's gotten off to a good start. The power of us united in reasoning, frame and family life. And on last week, Brother Shelton Gibbs IV did an excellent job on this coming Wednesday. It will be Brother Sidney Fears, creating conditions for growth in changing environments. Let us not forget to attend Bible class. We have uh, a hybrid version of Bible class, but we want you to come out and to worship with us. And, um, and that, uh, Bible classes are really, uh, we put a lot of time and effort, Brother Bradshaw has put a lot of time and effort into making Bible class such a spiritual uh, tool for our spiritual growth. Let us not forget the, the Dallas area preachers and church leaders Citywide revival. It's entitled Reengage. Takes place. It starts today through the 20th, and it'll be at five o'clock today at the Mountain View Church of Christ, and then Monday through Wednesday from 6:30 p.m. Starting at 6:30 p.m. So please uh, attend the citywide revival. In the bulletin, you also see the Missouri City Church of Christ uh, all in, and they're having an, an all in uh, workshop, and there's information in the bulletin. You can, you can, you can do a gospel meeting too. Okay. All right. Our two candidates are no longer candidates anymore. Our two brothers and sisters in Christ are out now. Calling them up, we are encouraging that we we have been following the, the the increase of infection, and so we're encouraging each and every one of us to wear a mask while we are inside the building, and especially those who who have um, uh, physical ailments to wear a mask. So, putting my mask on now. <laughs> All right, Nicole. And Nico, please come forward, please. 
I want you to look at, look at your church family. This is, this is about a, it's a pretty good deal of them, isn't it? Uh, your, these are your, your brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you see that camera there, you, you'll see some other brothers and sisters in Christ. You're, they're just inside the camera. Uh, and, uh, and you might be able to see them next Sunday when they come out into worship service. Okay. We want you all to know that we are so glad that you, you have made the best decision you can make in your life. And we want you to, to know that. And I pray that you all will mark this day as, as a day of salvation. And then we want you to use us as your brothers and sisters in Christ as you live your lives uh, as Christian examples. Thank you so much. All right, you all have a, have a seat there. Mama. Also, I, wanna, I want to recognize a few others that were baptized. It's Rafen Henderson in the audience this morning, Rafen. Henderson, and then also uh, Ronnie Culpepper was in this earlier, this morning's service, uh, was baptized on last week as well. So keep those names uh, in your prayers, and, and if you can congratulate them as you see them, please do. All right. Uh, my wife and I will, be, will not be here on next Lord's Day. We uh, will be celebrating 30 years, Amen. 30 years, 30 years, and I'm excited. <laughs> uh, so I, I, uh, just, just to let you know that uh, if you are in your early stages, you know, 29 and, and, and backwards, you can make it to 30 years. Now, I understand Brother Phillips is, you know, I mean, he's way ahead of us. He's in his 60-something, 60, 60 but, but it's, a, it's a major milestone, and I'm, and I'm just so glad uh, that we can do it and do it together. So, um, and so now we'll have Brother Jeremy Travis, and then Brother Jones has some very uh, important announcements to make and also with our up, upcoming uh, gospel campaign. May the Lord bless and keep each and every one of you. Thank you, Brother Otterberg. I pray that I make 30 years myself. <laughs> all right. So um, first of all, I want to thank the church for praying for us uh, from, from going to the conference. We just got back on last Friday um, from the youth conference at Michigan State University. And so we had a really good time. We just thank you for your support. But I would like to mention, I want to announce that first, we have some exciting news. We have Brother James Bradshaw. He was crowned king of the 2022 National Youth Conference. He won that competition. Congratulate him. Very proud of you, James. And then also we have Morgan Travis. She won first runner-up for Miss Youth Conference this year. Um, so congratulations to you, but I do want to mention that they received a scholarship for um, their tuition was paid for at Oklahoma Christian University, which is worth $96,000 over a four-year span. Wow, right? Man, was that me or what? Whoa, all right, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> So that was great. Um, so congratulations to them for all their hard work. Congratulate them and their parents, okay? Make sure you congratulate them and their parents for their hard work. Thank you very much. Next year we'll be at Jackson State University, so for the youth conference. May God bless you, Brother Jones. All right, good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, before I get into this short uh, presentation, just want to mention the upcoming gospel campaign that's coming up. The uh, theme for this year is God is the Supreme Justice. That is the theme for this year. So that will begin August the 7th through August the 11th. So on the way out, as you're leaving, you'll be able to pick up some flyers in the uh, foyer as well. 
So let's start inviting family, friends, and co-workers uh, to prepare for the upcoming gospel campaign. Now, uh, today you all are going to receive a gift. It's called the KFC Super Jimmit Box. Are you all hungry this morning? Well, that's what you're going to get this morning. So you can lick your fingers as well. Finger, finger looking good, right? But, but that's just a joke. You're not going to get that this morning. I know that's what you all were thinking. You're not getting, you're not getting physical food this morning. You're going to receive spiritual food this morning. So we're looking at six pieces of spiritual soul food with three sides. Spiritual soul food with three sides. Here we go. That's the first piece. This is called the historical periods of the Bible. Okay, and, and this is very important because all of this is related to being able to teach the open Bible study. That's what this information is for. Second piece, this is OBS study lesson number one. That's gonna be in there, OBS lesson number two. OBS lesson number three. And this is the worksheet ladder that goes with it. Now you're probably wondering, well, why is he giving me this information? I'm giving it to you because after the uh, summer series, we got about six or seven more weeks, we'll go into the fall semester where you're able to enroll in classes for the fall. We want every person that has not taken the open Bible personal evangelism class to take that class. So on today, when you receive this material, when you receive it, you'll already have it. You'll be able to look at it, go over, get familiar with it. Now, here's the plan of salvation. This will also be in there. And just looking at the plan of salvation, if you understand the plan of salvation, you can save a lost soul with just that chart right there. You see, you can save just that chart, understanding the plan of salvation. That will be in there. Uh, church history timeline going all the way back to 33 AD on the day of Pentecost, right? All the way up until the four major cults. So within this chart right here, it outlines uh, various denominations, who the founders were, right? So when you're talking to someone about uh, church timelines, you're able to give them the name and founder of the person who actually founded that church. Now, we know that in the Church of Christ, Jesus is the foundation of the what? The church. Basic Bible references. This right here is like a loaded baked potato. <laughs> loaded. Just this chart alone is loaded. It already outlines the plan of salvation, church history, and many other things that are within that, that chart there. Are you ready? This is the ready reference for growing uh, Christians by Paul saying it has facts and scriptures on 100 biblical subjects. This is loaded with information. It's in that packet. Everybody needs to get one of those. So here's your six piece of soul food supper. <laughs> this box contains traditional feasts. When I say a feast, we're talking about spiritual food. I hope you all didn't get too hungry talking about KFC. <laughs> but anyway, so six pieces of spiritual food with three sides. So in other words, there are nine items in this box. And so we need everybody that's inside the auditorium Please do not leave this room. Adult, male, uh, I mean adult, husband and wives, and adults, not children. We want you to go into the atrium area and grab that box. Amen. I think some of you all already have them. But we want everybody to go to your left, your right, and grab a box there in the atrium area for everybody. So here it is. Salvation has been what? It's been what? 
So what do we need? We need each one, that means you and I, reach one, teach one, baptize one. We need everybody to get in that mindset Amen. that this is why we're here. We're Christians. This is the great commission God has given us to go into the world and do what? Preach the gospel. No one is exempt from that. We need everybody. So in the fall, we're looking to see uh, various members in that class, 200 or more. Amen. Amen. That would be a wonderful setting if everybody uh, will take that class. The good thing about it, you will already have the materials. So get your box. <laughs> get that box. Real quickly, I would be uh, out of line if I did not mention Brother Michael Brown. Michael Brown? If, where is he? All right. You're going to have to come all the way up here, Brother Brown. <laughs> all right. This is our new brother in Christ. Michael, we <laughs> baptized. We were baptized on last, on last Sunday um, in, in Austin. Brother Gibbs uh, the third was down and preaching in Austin, and they were down there visiting. And, um, and Michael desired to obey the gospel, and now he is our brother in Christ. So as you see him, please, please encourage him uh, that he has made the best decision that he can make in his life. All right. Wave at your brothers and sisters on the way back. <laughs> And then I want to thank you all for, for being patient with us. There's a lot going on, and we want to make sure that you are very much aware of it. And it's in here somewhere. Ah. God is the supreme justice. And Brother, Brother Gibbs did an excellent job this morning uh, describing God as the judge. Our gospel campaign will be August the 7th uh, at the, uh, on Sunday, August the 7th, uh, 8 o'clock and 10.30 a.m. will be uh, our worship services. And then August the 8th through the 11th, beginning at 7 p.m., our guest speaker, Brother Jefferson Crothers from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, will be here to speak for us. And we're asking that all of us support the gospel campaign. Brother Jones and his and those that work with him have been canvassing. Uh, we are ready. Brother Carruthers have been, has been contacted. And we're ready to preach the gospel to those who don't know the Lord in this area. I pray that each and every one of us, uh, if we know someone who is not a member of the Lord's body, we have family members, now is a great time to invite them out and to be a part of our gospel campaign. God is the supreme justice. Now we'll have a closing song and a closing prayer. Will you stand? Show, show me, show me the way. pray. Most wise and holy Father, it is once again that we thank you so much for what we have heard, Father, and we just pray to God that you would continue to be with Brother Gibbs as he continues to preach your word, Father, that you would bless us, dear God, that we would go forth and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that you have allowed us to see this day, and we ask that you will be with us throughout the remainder of this day and all the days of our lives. It is in the name of Christ Jesus that we ask and pray. Amen. Amen.